teaching Torah from Jerusalem, the holy city. It says in Tanakh that the Torah go forth from Jerusalem and spread to the entire world. And it's a great honor to teach Torah from such a location, to study Torah in the midst of such holiness and such blessing in, in Torah. We're learning a, a new book here called Tamar Devara, which was written by Ramosha Kodavero, who lived in Svat, the holy mystical city. And this book is very special. Unlike other books in Kabbalah, it's extremely practical and speaking about the importance of character correction and how it relates to us in the spiritual realms and how we can emulate the characteristics, the midos of Hashem and how the structure of the upper worlds are made in such a way as to also show how we are to behave and how we are to act. And this is a book of much musar and, ca and speaking right to the heart on how to serve God. It's very special. It's not a long book. However, it's very deep and very, very sincere. So, the book begins, and I believe we have a sound problem again here. Please let me know if the sound is okay. So, the translator um, began with an interesting introduction, so I'll, I'll begin with that. Um, I found that many people skip the introductions to books thinking that they're just a bunch of fluff and not so important. And in fact, the introduction to books are some of the most important parts of, of study as they are very energetic and they sometimes have great secrets and great energies. So never skip the introduction. In fact, you know, there's some books where I read the introduction and, I, and uh, I didn't have time to read the book, but the introduction was so enriching, I got a lot out of the introduction. Please let me know if this sound is okay. So from the time of the immemorial preachers, they pointed out that the chief teacher of all religions is thou shalt walk in his ways. Now, different religions understand this differently. In Judaism, the doctor has always borne the ethical character. As he is merciful, so shalt thou be merciful. As he is compassionate, so shalt thou be compassionate. The Talmud preaches this explicitly. The Shem of the Agata clothes the naked, visits the sick, makes the bride and groom merry, comforts the mourners. To be like unto Hashem is to perform acts of charity. Right? We know from Avram Avinu, Abraham, that God went and he visited him when he had the brismila, when he, when he um, had his circumcision to comfort him. So, but how can one be like unto the Ain Sof, something so high? So tradition says, in, intimate, Im, I'm sorry, imitate Hashem's midos, Hashem's character correction. Are you able to hear me, um, Haiti, who's joined us? But midos to the Agudist means traits of character. To the Kabbalist, it means the spheres. So how can one be like unto the spheres? That is the ethical problem of the Kabbalah. And the Tamar Devara is an attempt to find the solution to this. How we can be like the Spheros. And how we are like the Spheros. And Hashem is the greatest architect. Hashem made the worlds above with everything that is very precise. And we don't realize how precise we are as well in, in Hashem, the way Hashem created us. The microcosm is an exact replica of the microcosm and man is only a mirror addition to of Adam Kadmon. The mystical arch the typical man. The limbs of man refer to the divine spheres. Ego man must use his limbs in such a fashion as to reflect the spheres 
with which they stand in mystic relation. So what the introduction is saying here is that our body is a reflection of what appears above. And so, for instance, our head is like the keter, the crown. Chachmabina, our arm is chesed, kindness. Right is strength, gvura, I'm sorry, right is chesed. Left is gvura, strength. The chest. Tiferes. So we are like a mirror of the above spheres, and Hashem made us like an architect to represent the spheros and in, in be like a mirror to this. Are you able to hear me? If the mere shape of his organs bear witness to man's relation to the divine model, but his deeds, belly, that relation, then man is indeed falsifying the image of Hashem in which he was created. Hence, the prime importance of ethics is the mystic system. Each action below must be directed towards the perfection of the divine spheres. Such is the standpoint from which the Tomer's Ver was conceived. So each action, I will repeat this, below must be directed towards the perfection of the spheres above. Which is higher meaning to everything that we're doing, every action. Our body, our, we, we're a mirror to these spheros and to the, the heavenly embodiment. And when we do something, a mitzvah, we, we do things right. And we're fixing these, world, these worlds above, we're bringing tikkunim so that the, the flow of blessing comes without hindrance. When we're sinning, we're, we're putting a stumbling block in that flow of light and blessing. And we're making a, a niche, you know, in, in the spheres above. Because we're a mirror of that. Are you able to hear me, Eli? I welcome you. Anyone else here? Are, is the sound okay? We're now going to go and, and get right into the first chapter. I'd just like a confirmation that the sound is working. Since this will be the fourth time I've tried this and so holy, maybe uh, we have to get through this obstacle of having sound. Ah, sounds great. Wish I could hear your, your voice as well. We are doing this live. So, chapter one. It behoves man to aspire to be like unto his creator. For then he will enter into the mystery of the supernal form. Both in image and likeness. For if man should be like unto him only with respect to his body, but not in his deeds, he is indeed falsifying the form, and it is it will be said of him a beautiful form but ugly deed. So we first said here that when you aspire to be like Hashem in your midos, being good, being proper. So therefore you take on yourself a reflection of the image of Hashem. You have a light from Hashem. And you take on the likeness. You have a strong connection to God. That is, you become stronger. Like everyone, we're, we're, we're part of Hashem's idea of creation. And we're not separate from that. But, but we separate from that when we are... Uh, we have pride when we sin. When we are doing the right thing, we have that strong bond that is unbreakable. And we become, we have this image of Hashem. You know, people that are tzaddikim, holy sages, you see a great light in their face. Because this is Salam Alakim. This is the light of God that's raining on, uh, upon them. The light of the Shekhinah, of His divine presence that, that rests upon those who are doing the right thing. They're doing mitzvot and the commandments of God and, and learning Torah and doing kindness. For the importance of the supernal image and likeness is its deed. And what avails it that one is like unto the supernal form in the image and structure of his organs? If in his actions he is unlike his creator, it behoves man to liken his self 
to the deeds of the crown Keter, which are the thirteen qualities of divine of supernal mercy. So these thirteen attributes of mercy, we have to to, to acknowledge them. We have to acknowledge the, the, the beauty of Hashem and his characteristics and we have to emulate them and connect to him through them. So and these thirteen are concealed in the mystery of the following verses. Who is like uh, like a Hashem? Who is a Hashem like unto thee that pardoneth inquiry inquity and passes over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He reigneth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in kindness. Okay, so you have to see the meat of Hashem that when we do something wrong, he looks away, he gives us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, full of patience. So we have to have this patience as well. Shalom Rabbi Leibowitz, I appreciate your visit. My New York accent just came out now that you're here. So he retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in kindness. He will again have compassion upon us. He will suppress our inquiries, inquities, yea, that will cast all their sins in the depths of the, of the sea, that will show truth unto Yaakov, kindness to Avram, as thou hast sworn unto our fathers in the days of old. It says in Micha. So, I'll tell you a secret. A person, when they do something wrong, Okay, they have the sin etched upon their bones. As Rabbi Nachman says. Okay, and this causes them much suffering of their soul. We're learning Tomer Devara. So, Hashem is patient with this person. And he puts off his anger. And we're going to see soon that Hashem is sending light to that person while they're sinning. And he's still patient. But there's a certain secret. I once heard that a person is not, I mean, he, he ha might have all his sins, and maybe many, they may be very numerous. And the angels, they're bringing the sins before God, and they're, they, the, the angels that want to go and plead the case, you have prosecuting angels and, and uh, defending angels. And so, when it comes to a person having all these sins, okay, and you would think that God would, would judge a person, you know, mm -hmm. they did on, even on purpose to sin, but Hashem waits until a person speaks Lashon Hara. When he speaks against another Jew, when he does, when he hurts another Jew with, with his mouth, with his words, that's when all those sins go up to judgment. But until you speak Lashon Hara, they're on hold. They're on hold. So that's how important it is to speak properly with our mouths. And so we continue. The first, who is Hashem like unto thee? This teaches us that Hashem is a humble king who suffers inconceivable humiliation. Now without a doubt, nothing is ever hidden from his direction. And furthermore, there is not a moment when a man is not fed and sustained by the divine force which flows down upon him. And yet you find that man never sins against Hashem, but what at the very moment of sin, Hashem showers upon him the influx which gives him existence and motion to his organs. Even though man sins with that very force, Hashem has not removed it from him. The Holy One, blessed be, does rather suffer such humiliation and yet allows a force which moves that sinner's organs to flow down to him. Though man spends the force at that very moment in sin and transgression and wrath-rousing deeds, he, Hashem, suffers it. And say not that it is not within Hashem's power to keep that good from him. For by his power that man's hands and feet could be dried up in a moment, as with one word, as he did to Yeroboam, 
It says in the Kings. Now, even though it is within Hashem's power to cause the return to Himself of the influx which gives life, and He might say, Since thou sinnest against me, sin with thine own strength, not with mine. Nevertheless, He has not withheld His goodness from that man, nor failed to bear the humiliation, but rather suffered and showered His goodness upon Him. This unspeakable patience and humility Therefore do the angels call Hashem the humble king. This then is the meaning of our verse. Who is Hashem like unto thee? Thou o Hashem, master of grace and beneficent one. Hashem, capable of taking vengeance and gathering in that which belongs to thee. Thou art patient, sufferest humiliation until the sinner repents. This is the quality in which man should perfect himself, exceedingly patient, even when he is humiliated to the point described, he should still retain his patience and not remove his favor from him who have, had been receiving it. My friends, I think we chased people because uh, the audio wasn't working, otherwise we'd have more people inside. My friend, there, there have been many people that came to me and they were going through a difficulty with their spouse and they were kicked out and separated and they felt they didn't really do I mean they might have done something wrong but not to such an extent to suffer this way and they're crying out and they don't know what to do and so I've told them Hashem is testing you He's making it very difficult. You're now in the dark light. But in that dark light, He gave you that a certain light, and that's to, to, to bond with Him. He wants you to connect to Him directly, without the need of the spouse or anyone else. You have to go and, and suffer degradation and humble yourself to the Hashem. How are you going to get closer to God? You're going to need to be humble. And so this is happening to you with your spouse to, to bring you humility. You have to apologize. You have to say, I'm sorry. You have to do everything you can to go and make peace, even if it's not your fault. Bring yourself to the lowest, lowest depth, because there you're going to find God. And then you see, every time when I gave this advice, it always worked out. And so, this is what Hashem does. Hashem, why we're sinning, do you hear this, my friends? Why we're actually performing the act of, uh, of sin? There's a light shining to us that's giving us breath. And God could remove that away from us. So, I mean, here He is, we're sinning. And he's sustaining us, and he's sitting there watching and giving us the light. He's like, can you imagine something? You, you. It's like you know, your child. You're feeding the child, and you know he's gonna go. You know, say, you know, the child's gonna go and do something wrong. But you're like, here's the yogurt. Eat, 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 my son. And then your son, you know, your son's going out to, to, to a party and doing something bad. I mean, Hashem, God forbid. But this is what a parent does. He, he's, he's patient and humble. And he, he believes he's going to come around. So this is what Hashem is doing. He is patient to the, to the levels we can't understand. So what is the Sefer Torah about? It's about learning midos, learning how to, how to form yourself, your character trait and your, your personality, to be like unto Hashem, to be a, we're creating the image of God. And so this is what Torah Torah is telling us, to go and, and to dig deep and find really what is the look at the midos of Hashem. The characters of Hashem, how He does kindness, how He does Haknasas Orchim, how He visits the sick, how He takes care of the bent, how He is patient. And if we go and we learn from Hashem, if we understand the way that this is the way the spheros work, and the whole system, the architect, the Hashem, the architecture that Hashem made, and the whole building, all the system, everything that is systematically working like this, and we, if we emulate these these characteristics. We're gonna come. Con we're gonna connect ourselves to the spheros. We're gonna connect ourselves to Hashem and the Shrina. It's gonna be unbelievable. Then we're gonna have Selim Elokim. We're gonna radiate the light of God in our life. We're gonna have only blessing, and the and and Shef is gonna flow through all the spheres without hindrance. It's gonna go from Chesed, Gevurah, Tveres, Neitzach, Ho, Yisod. It's not gonna get all stuck up there. All the Shefa. God wants to give you light, my friends. What is Hashem waiting for? He's waiting for you to do kindness. When you do kindness. You bring the light down. Hashem only wants to do good for you. He only wants to draw you close. And let's go on further. So why you're sinning, why you're doing something wrong, 
God is giving you life. He's still sustaining you with patience, hoping you're going to, even while you're actually in the act of sin, hoping that very last moment you'll change your mind. You know, a lot of people, they get stuck into sin and they think they can't turn around. Even that last, to, to those last moments, they're already like, you know, there in the deepest pit. And they, and they think, you know, it's too late for me to turn around. But no, my friends, it's never too late. And it, actually, if you turn around in the last moment, that could be the greatest light is turning around at that point. So you can always turn around. You can always change direction. And so, Hashem is sending light. So let's speak about this. Okay, here I have a... Um, my English words, I, I'm, what is this called? Draws, okay. So here you have draws. Now, everything in the physical realm is given light, spiritual realm also. So this is given light to, from God. I'm given light from God. If, I, if Shem removes that light, I don't exist. I die. He removes my breath. And we have to be thankful that we have breath. We have to be thankful for what we have, that we have life, that we have to cherish everything that we have. So this draw, this, this uh, um, filing cabinet. So I want to explain to you is that right now, um, we open this draw, and everything in this draw, I have, let's see, I have, this is a, um, a Israel um, parking pass. I have some pens, okay, and I have some clips in here, okay? Now, when I close this draw, now, it, it's, it may not be a good example because it's slightly see-through, but if you can't see through it. So, when I close this draw, everything inside this, okay, when I open this, everything had light. Okay, it had colors, it has light. This color could represent the spheros of yellow could be Gevura. Right here's gold, it's a gold watch. This is this represents from the light reflecting from the sphero Gevura. Okay, um, when I close this, okay, it, it no longer needs light. Okay, because I don't need to see it, it has no purpose. It only has purpose when I open it or when I take this watch and need to see it. So Hashem doesn't have to shine light upon it. Um, so the question I have for you is, does this exist? I mean, you can see a little reflection here, but if you didn't, would God need to send it light? Hashem only does what is necessary, shining, shining light to what needs to exist. But what we don't realize is Hashem is creating things, Hashem is constantly renewing creation. Hashem, when I open this, He's creating this again. He's shining light. When I close this, there doesn't need to be any light, which means it doesn't exist. Just some food for thought. Any thoughts? Okay. The second, that pardon, pardoned inquity. For in order that the destroyers be not created. For we have studies in a Mishnah. He who commits a crime creates for himself an evil accuser. This accuser stands before Hashem and says, So and so created me. Now no creature can exist in this world except through the influx of divine force. Accuser who stands before Hashem, whereby does he exist? In justice, does the, the Holy One, blessed be he, might say, I will not sustain this monster. Let him go to him who have made him and be sustained by him. Then the destroyer would descend at once and deprive its maker of his soul, or cut it off, or render such punishment to its maker as the sin merits. Until the destroyer itself pass out of existence, but the Holy One Blessed Be does not act thus. Meaning that a person does something sin, he creates a evil angel that has to do with that sin. Hashem could easily say, you know what? I'm not sustaining you anymore. You, you, you're sustained by this evil angel. Let him sustain you. And then the day that angel will rip the person's soul into pieces. But Hashem doesn't do this. Okay? But the Lord Basi does not act thus. Instead, he suffers and bears the iniquity. And just as he sustains the whole world, so also does he sustain this destroyer. Until one of these three things happen. Either the sinner repents and does tshuva, and destroys his accuser by acts of a penance, or the existence of the destroyer is nullified by the suffering and 
ultimate death of the sinner at the hands of the righteous judge. Or the accuser is preserved until the sinner has paid his penalty in Gehenna, in hell. This was indeed Cain's question. Is my sin so great it cannot be born? As it says in Gracious. So, this is why it's so important for a person to go and repent before they go to sleep every night. And to constantly, you know, in, in the Sephardic, Hasidic prayer books, we constantly have the words for repentance after Shemona Esrei. Because we have to always, a Jew has to always be thinking about repenting and getting higher and higher and closer to God. And so it's very important before a person goes to sleep to confess their sins before God. To remove these, these sins from our shoulders. Because these sins that we do, they create they create evilness. And, but this can be rectified through repenting, through doing mitzvahs, learning Torah. We can destroy these things and raise these... When a person does is a Bali tshuva, he repents to God after many years in his life. People look at him, oh, he used to be a sinner. But they don't realize that when a person repents, he can take all those sins and bring them into merits. So all those avarice, all that time wasted, you by repenting, by doing a tshuva and, and being a Baal tshuva, you take all those sins and you bring them, you're bringing all that into, in, into holiness. Why did God create you in such a situation where many times it's not your fault, you grew up with families, with a family that, that didn't know any better? How did you know? You didn't know you, about eating kosher when you're four years old. Okay, five, six, seven. What did you know? Or even later, sometimes a teenager, you didn't know, what do you know about Hashem? No one taught him. So, why does this soul have to have that situation? Because that soul is bringing up, bringing all that, that darkness back into light. You know, when God created the world, things, the, the, the sparks fell. With, with, it was intended to be like this, where Hashem created a perfect world and put Adam and Rishon into, into this perfect world and he ate from the Eitz Adas, from the tree of knowledge. And then, you know, sparks started flying. <laughs> they had to be picked up through us doing mitzvos. And so, where do these sparks go? They go to the convert. You know, people look at a convert, they don't give him enough respect. These sparks are going to the convert. God went, and he wants to bring a holy soul into the world. The angels all from the other side are saying, why would you bring this soul into the world? The Jewish people don't deserve him. So you know what Hashem says? Okay, you know what? I'm going to put him on the other side. Okay, and we'll see what happens. And that's a convert. He puts him in a, in a family that's not even Jewish. And, this, and this, this holy soul grows up, thinking, reflecting, something's missing, something's missing. And, and he finds God. And he brings all that darkness into light. He is the, he's the holy, holy person. And yet we don't treat them the same way as we should. This Bali Chuba, we look at them, people look at them as down because they're from, from birth. No, the Bali Chuba has a much harder time. He's taking all the darkness into light. Look up to him. So the rabbi is a blessed memory. Explain this, this query thus. Everyone's so quiet. No one's commenting. I'm screaming my head off. Come on. Let's go. So... You can bear the whole, the whole world that is sustained and nourish it. And is my sin so great that you cannot bear it? That is nourished and disturbed until I have repented and, rep and, and repaired? This is a, is a quality of exceeding, exceeding patience. He sustains and nourishes an evil creature created by the sinner until he repents. So not only is that God sustaining you while you're sinning, but he's also sustaining the creature, God forbid, that you might have made, the, the, this evilness you might have made, he's sustained that also until you get around to repent for it. So he's sustaining you and that. From this man may learn that to what extent one must practice patience and bear the injustice of his fellow and the evil that he does. Even though the evil done or the sin against him is still not wiped out, man ought to bear up patiently until his fellow mends his ways or until the evil vanishes of its own accord so just like we go and we or i don't know how else to say it but we hurt hashem i mean we're sinning it's like spitting in in his face we're sitting there doing something wrong when we know he's sustaining us that very moment so same thing our friends our comrades they could do the same type of thing 
and I don't know why you know why are they acting so this way. You know, they, they're usually nice to me. Why is he so rude to me today? He's uh, and, and not treating me nice. My friend doesn't appreciate my time. But and then we think, ah, you know what? Hashem has the same situation with us. And then we learn from Tamar Devar that a person fixes himself in this world by looking at the way Hashem manifests his midos and characters and how he manifested this virot, chesed, gevura, tiferes, which all has is created from midos, the idea of midos. And then we have to act in this world with, in the same manner. Shall we continue? The third, and passes over transgression. This is a great quality. The forgiveness is not affected through a messenger, but only by Hashem's own hand. As is written, for with thee is forgiveness says in the Psalms. And forgiveness consists in washing away the sin as is written, the Shem shall wash away the filth of the daughters of Sion. says in Isaiah. And I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. says in Yechesko. The words passes over transgression mean that he sends his cleansing waters to wash away and pass over the transgression. Exactly in this way should man conduct himself. He should not say, should I repair what another has destroyed by his sins? For when man sins, the Holy One blessed be himself, not through a messenger repairs his fault and washes away the uncleanness of his sins. And since this is so, man should be greatly ashamed to return to sin. For the king himself must wash his dirty garments. The fourth, the remnant of his heritage. The Holy One blessed be conducts himself thus with Israel, saying, What shall I do with Israel? And they are my kinsmen, and the, remind, the remainder of my flesh. For they are indeed the consort of the Holy One, and he calls them daughter, sister, and mother, as the sages of blessed memory have explained. Furthermore, it is written, the children of Israel are people near unto him, as it says in the Psalms. Actual king, kinship has he with them. They are his children. This is what is meant by the remnant, sheriff of his heritage. That is, the remnant of his flesh. Shir Basar. They are his heritage, his kin. And if he punches them, the pain, he says, is his own. As is written, in all their affliction was he afflicted, it says in Isaiah. So, you understand this, when God punishes us for our sins, because he does it because there's no choice, we, ha we need, we, he gave us every last bit of patience. But he's feeling the pain of that. So, not only is Hashem feeling the pain when we sin, when we do, this, we do sin, he's still sustaining us with light. And this causes him pain. But even when after that patience is continued, he's sustaining both that person who didn't repent yet and his sins and the evil angels or whatever they he created through the sins. And then finally when it comes time to punish that person, which he punishes them only so that they'll repent, he is gentle with them. Even at that point, Hashem suffers with that affliction, with that pain. When you're in pain, a person, he becomes sick. And Talmud says, he becomes sick. You should first go and look at your deeds and see if there's anything you need to repent for. And if you can't find anything, then know that it, your suffering is because God just wants to draw you close and for you to pray to Him. But when you're looking and, you, and, you, and you, you did something wrong, 
God is feeling that pain when you're not feeling good. He doesn't want you to, to feel this way. And even if you are in pain and it's not because you sinned and you're, you're just suffering physically because He wants you to pray to Him and draw close to Him, He's also feeling this suffering and this pain. And we're going to see now that this is the way we have to feel to our brothers. Right? Everything we're learning here in terms of our is to show us the muse of a God, the characteristics of God, and how we have to, to follow them with mankind. And this is what's going to bring us to holiness. And Abba Sisro. The Kefsiv is with the Aleph, so that we may read the Aleph was afflicted. That is, the affliction reaches the upper one, which are the dual faces by which the world was chiefly governed. But the carry is with a vav. That is, the affliction is his, as it is written, his soul was grieved for the mystery of Israel, judges. For he cannot witness their shame or pain, since they are the remnant of his heritage. Thus should man live with his brother. All Israel are kin to one another, for their souls include one another. There is in this soul part of every other soul and in every other part of this soul because of this inclusion there is no comparison between the multitude performing commandments or in an individual doing so people they don't realize what it means what does obviously so mean obviously so being loving your fellow means to understand that when your fellow is hurting, you are hurting. When your fellow does a commandment, a mitzvah, you're doing a mitzvah. You're being raised up. When he is sinning, you are sinning. You're not, you're, we're all one soul. We all suffer together. We all have joy together. That's why it's so important to help out your fellow. Because you are him. You're only helping yourself. We're all connected. This is what the sages meant when they said concerning him who is among the first ten to arrive in the synagogue, that even though a hundred should come after him, his merit is as great as all their merit combined. The number hundred is meant to be exact, for the ten are included one in the other, making it as though there were ten times ten, or a hundred, and each of them is comprised of one hundred. Hence, even if a hundred should come, his merit is as great as all of theirs. A beautiful explanation of that. Shows you how important it is to help your brother to go and do mitzvahs and commandments because you're getting credit for it. You're, you're being raised up with him. Everything that he does and then he affects the next person. The Lubavitch Rebbe, they, people ask him, why do you give dollars out? Why don't you give candy or something else? And he said, because I want chesed upon chesed. When I give a dollar and I tell that person to give it to charity, then he's helping the next guy, which means when I'm doing mitzvah, I'm actually, my mitzvah is actually to two. It's extended. And that's the beauty of his vision of kindness and chesed, was that he understood that a mitzvah is transferred mm -hmm. beyond. And this is how we have to do mitzvahs. With this vision, for the same reason all Israelites are surely one for another, for in each there is actually part of the soul of his fellow, and when one sins he defiles not only himself, but also that part of his fellow which is included in himself. Hence, because of that included part, he is surely for him. They are then actual kinsmen, remnants of each other. Oh, my friends. So, not only is Hashem sustaining you when you do something wrong, He's giving you light otherwise, and giving you breath to actually commit that sin and not taking your life away. Not only that, but your fellow who is connected to you, He is going down which means all of Israel when you do something wrong everyone going down a little bit like this so you know sometimes I'm holding on to a thin wire and I think to myself how can I sin because if I sin 
I know it's going to affect my brother, and I and I try, my fellow Jew, and I try to hold on just from that cause alone. Okay, just hold on there, Moshe, a little bit longer. You can do it. You can go and be strong. Be strong for your fellow. And that's why I tell you, be strong to your fellow. That's what the Cordovero is teaching us here. So hence, a man should always wish his fellow well and regard with pleasure any good that falls to his fellow's lot. And his fellow's honor should be as dear to him as his own. For in truth, it is his own. So do you understand? Your fellow's having a simcha, joy. You know, I see many people, they're single. And I asked them, why didn't you go to the wedding? And I kind of knew, you know, and they're like, well, it's kind of hard for me. You know what? I'm sorry you're single. But your friend, your friend, you were part of that mitzvah. You... Are, 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 are being completed as well through his mitzvah. That's why it's so important to share in each other's mitzvahs. And, you know, a Gabbai once told me, the Gabbai of the Nichols of Rev. Rev. Schwartz, he told me once, he said, you always call us, everyone always calls us when something's wrong, they call the Rebbe. But no one ever calls us to tell us the good things. He, I said, he said, make sure you call us with good news too. You know, we need to hear that. We want to be part of that too. And I thought that was a very important message. And so, a person should always wish his fellow well because his happiness, his success, don't be jealous from it. You don't need his lot. You need your own lot that, that God knows what's best for you. But be happy for him. Be happy for his mazel, for his good mazel. And if he's suffering, you know, feel his pain. I met with my Chavrusa one time, my study partner. I was going through a lot. My father was so sick in the hospital. He was bedridden. He couldn't talk. And I was suffering so much. And I was telling my Chavrusa, you know what I'm going through. And he said, look, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, look, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm going through a lot myself. You know, I'm engaged. I have a lot going on in life. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not thinking about you at night. When I go to sleep... I mean, I'm not on that level. I don't think about you. Probably all of us, a lot of your friends, you know, we're not worried about you. That's just the truth. I mean, I should be on that level, but I'm not. Your problems, I'm sorry, but the, you're still stuck with them. I, if I can help you, I'll try to help you. But I don't go to sleep with them in my, in my chest. And I told myself from that day, I won't be like that person. I mean, wish my Chavrusa, my Chavrusa well. But no, no, you need to live the pain of others in your heart. As uncomfortable that as it is, there are many nights I didn't sleep at night because of the pain of people that wrote me an email, suffering. No, we need to feel the pain of others in our heart. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to not feel that. We should want to feel that. You know, my mother, she makes sure to always go to funerals. And, and uh, who's asked her, why are you going to this funeral? You don't barely even know the people. And then you go to the funeral, and you see my mother, she's crying more than the, more than the, 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 than the widow. She's crying, crying for the pain, the, the suffering. I'm like, Mom, you don't even know them. I feel it, I feel it, I feel so bad. People don't know how holy my mother is. She feels, always she felt the pain of others. So this is the level we need to reach. This is the characteristics of Hashem that we have to emulate. Feeling... What's going on, cherishing the moments the, uh, of the good of our fellow, the bad of, that our fellow goes through, and being their support. You don't realize how important it is, and then to, to pray to God for your fellow. You can do so much more for him than he can do himself. person who's in jail, he can't get himself out. Someone has to open the key from the other side. That's you. Anyone still here? Not so many people commenting. Okay. For this reason we were commanded and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself in Laika. It is meet that man should wish to see his fellow upright and should never speak this pairing, pairingly of him nor wish him ill. For just as the Holy One Blessed does not wish to see our shame or pain because of his near relationship to us, so should man not desire to see his brother shamed or afflicted 
or distressed. And whatsoever befalls his fellow man should feel as though that sorrow or joy had actually befallen him. Thank you for sticking around, Rabbi Yosef. Did I put everyone else to sleep? Should I continue or end this year and, and uh, do a part two another time? How long are we going on here for? Wow, 45 minutes. What's your vote? I'd like to finish the first chapter, but it's a long way away. Very, very, very long way away. The fifth, he retaineth not his anger forever. This is another noble quality. Even when a man persists in sin, Hashem does not retain his anger, and should he retain it for a time, he does not retain it forever, but dismisses it even when the sinner may not have repented. Thus, we find that in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Yoash, Hashem restored the, bound, the boundary of Israel. Even though they were then worshipped in calves, he had mercy on them, says in Kings. Since they did not repent, why did he show them mercy? Because of this quality that he retaineth not his anger forever. Nay, quite the contrary, he lessens his anger and does not punish, even though the sin is, being, is still being performed and waits in mercy that the sinner may repent. This is declared by the verse, I will not contend forever, it says in Isaiah, and I will not bear grudge forever, as it says in Yermio. The Holy One deals sometimes in severity and sometimes in kindness, but always works for the good of Israel. Wow, so Shem sometimes just pardons the sin even if we don't repent. He still sometimes pardons the sin and says, okay, I'm going to let this one go. You know, I believe in you. And we have to do that with our fellow as well, as we're going to uh, read it momentarily. It behoves man to deal with his fellows with this quality. Even when one has a right to inflict painful punishment upon his fellow or upon his own son, he should not on that account increase the severity of his punishment. Nor should he retain his anger if he has become angry, but rather should he destroy it and retain not his anger forever. For example, there is the case where enmity is legally permitted. If thou see the donkey of thine enemy lying under its burden, shall thou forbear to pass by him? Thou shalt surely release it with him, as it says in Shemos. Now how can a man have an enemy, since it's forbidden to hate? Good question. The rabbis have explained the saying that he had seen that man transgress the commandment, and being a sole witness could not testify against him. So he hates him in respect of this sin. Yet the Torah commands, Thou shalt surely release it, that is, release the enmity which is in your heart. For it is a commandment to bring him close to ourselves in law. Perhaps he may be included thereby. This is indeed the quality of he retaineth not his anger forever. So if you see someone and you know that they, they're sinful, they're not so good, and you see them needing help, you know, it behooves you to go over there and, and you know, and with all your heart, help them out. You know, it says in the Talmud that if you're in a community and you have both Jews and non and non Jews and you have the poor in both, you should also give to the to the poor the non Jews as well to help them out. You see Atsala in a, in in Israel, America, they're helping out the non Jews as well and they're going on, on calls and they're they're doing kindness to all people.
I grew up in a house where my father was an amateur radio operator, uh, nicknamed Ham Radio, where they used to have radios before the cell phones. And people who are members of this type of club, you'd have to pass. I'm also was a uh, was a member. I call someone's KA3ZCJ. And so we had these walkie talkies, and whenever there was something going on, where there was electricity outings or or their accidents, you know, even though we weren't registered, um, um, Q, uh, I guess, um, public um, officials, I mean, it was like a community service where we would be there to help people in need, and help each other out. And I, my father would always help out many of the non-Jews in the area whenever he could. They called him rabbi. He made a big kiddush Hashem. Um, it's important to show the nations of the world that where we understand our job is to be a light unto all the nations and to, and that from us blessing flows to all the world and so we have to have a kind heart and when I saw my father have this kind heart where people would come over and help them out young people and give them direction in life who were not even Jewish um, this helped me to, to be where I am today having Makars and done Jewish outreach to hundreds and thousands of people because I saw his open heart, and I always tell people, you know what, if you close your heart and you say, well, here's my line, okay, I only do kindness to these people, this group of people, and you know what, over this line, you know, I don't have to do, I have to go and help only God's chosen or the elite of God's chosen, you know, I know this person, I'm going to give him, you know, help, he's, he's going to do sins or this and that, but when a person goes and they put a line, it's like they harden their heart. And yes, you have to be realistic. The Talmud says, you know, we don't give charity. We, if, we, if someone asks, char give, asks for charity, you know, and they're not, you know, going to use it for the right reasons, we give them a little, le we give them less. We don't give them a lot. And actually it could be sinful to give them a lot. But a person's heart has to be open. And once you go and you make lines and say, I don't do this kindness past this line, then your heart is not the same. It's not a true heart of flesh. And so my father was kind to all people. He taught me to be kind to all people. And not just that, I've, I learned to be kind to animals. You see an animal suffering, you pick him up, take him to the vet, a bird. You know, you teach it to your children, a bird flies into your yard and he's missing a wing. And you can't you, you put him in the box. You, you you take you take care of him, you feed him for days, you try to make him better. A person who says, you know what, I don't have to do that, let Hashem take care of it, let someone else take care of it. That person is hardening their hearts. When you're open, your heart is full of kindness to all people, then you're gonna be really kind to your fellow Jew. Okay? You think you're being kind, you say, I'm only gonna be kind to this group of people, okay? Who who are the same who only vote for, for say Donald Trump. I'm not gonna be nice to those Hillary people. For instance, we're in the elections at, least at this time. I'm not going to be kind to these other people. Okay, once you do that, you're not going to be. You're, it means that your your heart is not completely pure, in, in 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 kindness. And therefore, when it comes to that person, that that, that person, even in your own group, that you've said well, these people I'm going to give kindness to, you're not going to give them a hundred percent because you don't know what a hundred percent is. Once your heart is completely for kindness and about love and affection and, and feeling the pain to others, Hashem, you know, He, he sustains. All living beings. Once your heart is open, then you're gonna give that that true hundred percent to even your group that you really appreciate. Okay. Once you start to make those lines, you're you're making those lines up there too as well. So you have to work on that. You have to you have to be completely selfless. We have to go and want to give, 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 because that's what God is doing. He's giving and giving and giving and giving. And when we and, and sometimes Hashem has. Like this, this process, this, this present, ready to to give us. And Shemayim was just sitting there, like probably like right above my shoulder, right above here, is probably this this big, big uh, uh, um, um, bundle of, of bills, a uh, hundred dollar bills. Okay, and all God is waiting for is for me to do kindness. Once I do kindness, it's just gonna fall down on my head. Okay, but I'm sitting here. It's holding. She's holding it up there. He, all Hashem wants is to do good, but He's waiting for us to do kindness here below. Everything we do here below makes a reflection above. It brings blessing through all the channels of the spheros.
ไรเพื่อว่าไงก็ go back a bit. It behoves man to deal with his fellows with this quality, even when one has a right to inflict painful punishments upon his fellow or upon his own son, he should not on a, on that account increase the severity of his punishment, nor should he retain his anger if he has become angry, but rather should he destroy it and retain not his anger forever. For example, there is a case where enmity is legally permitted. If thou see a donkey of thy enemy. Lying under its burden, thou shalt shalt thou forbear to pass him by. Thou shalt surely release it, uh, uh, release it with him. Now, how can a man have an enemy? Right, since this is forbidden to hate. You read this. The rabbis have explained this saying that had he seen that man transgress a commandment, and being a sole witness. Could not testify against him, so he hates him in respect to this sin. Right? The person is hate when you when you hate a person, you have to hate the sin that they're doing, not the person. You don't know why he's doing that sin. Maybe it's accidental. Maybe he doesn't know any better. Okay? It could be the, the you know if, if you see a sage sinning, it says, give him the the, the 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 eye of merit. Why? Because you don't know. Maybe a spark from the food he ate or something fell into him, and therefore he sinned. But it, normally he wouldn't sin. But it was not even him. It was the spark of unholiness that 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 that, that got etched into him through something he ate. Maybe he's trying to help someone. I'll tell you, doing kir, if you have no idea how much filth rubs off on you from people around you when you're trying to go and help them because they're people are stuck. And you're trying to get them out. Okay. Baal Shem Tov says, and most people don't agree with this. Baal Shem Tov said that you have to be willing to, in kir to go. You have to be willing to go to Gehenna just to save a fellow Jew. And, and, and pull him back to the right side. You have to be willing to go to Gehenna. I feel like I'm here on the on the Facebook and you know and in doing the cure for me. You know, this is a little bit of like go, willing to go to Gehenna because I wouldn't have any of this stuff. I don't I don't need this in my life. I'm here for you. I'm here to emanate the word the, the ways of Hashem to do kindness, to teach Torah and spread the light. So look at that fellow in kindness. Okay. And hate the sin that he committed, not him. See only the good, see the potential in people. And help bring out that potential. Yet the Torah commands, thou shalt surely release it. That is, release the enmity with, which is in your heart. For it is a commandment to bring him close to ourselves in love. Perhaps he may be influenced thereby. This is indeed the quality of, he retaineth not his anger forever. And I think this would be a good place to stop. I appreciate all those that have come. I see many of you have come in and out of this year. I'm probably competing with the Olympics. And uh, what can I do? Um, I could do some twirls while I'm giving the shear. Then I wouldn't have to compete. But please share this video on on the groups. And we'll get as many more people to uh, to join and to learn the, the words of Torah. Gedaliah, why didn't you tell me you were here, my brother? Shalom, shalom. Who else is here? It doesn't show me if you like the video. It only shows me if you comment or if you join inside. Am I competing with the Olympics? Where is everybody tonight? I had some problem with the sound, so I, a lot of people didn't think the sound was working. Shalom, shalom. So we'll try to con continue this another time. We're, we're still in the middle of the Kutima, uh, the kids of the Kutima run. I just thought I'd give a taste of something else, and it will go between different things. Everyone has a different uh, need in Torah and path, and we'll try to to snatch onto as many as those as we can.
Rachel, where were you? I didn't know you were here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Shalom. It's a very beautiful book. Uh, Tomer Devora. It's my pleasure to share it. Shalom.